If you traveled 250 million years into the past, you'd be witnessing the dawn of dinosaurs. One of the leading theories is that dinosaurs evolved from a species known as archosaurs. These were the dominant reptiles that appeared during the late Permian period. To some, they may even look like dinosaurs, and that's because they were ancestors to these incredible creatures. Over time, the archosaurs split up into two groups. One of these groups led to crocodiles, and the other led to dinosaurs, which continued evolving into thousands of different species. One of the main traits they eventually gained was their bipedal abilities. Early dinosaurs began to walk on two legs, freeing their front limbs for other uses, like grabbing food and defending themselves. And that's just the start of their evolutionary journey. Let's travel back in time, 250 million years ago, and witness the history of dinosaurs in 10 minutes. Triassic period. As you enter this new era, you'll notice that the dinosaurs running around look pretty different from what you're used to seeing. One of the earliest dinosaurs that emerged from the archosaurs was the Eoraptor. This little guy was about the size of a dog barely one meter tall and weighing in at a meager 10 kilograms. You know, we typically think of dinosaurs as these massive creatures, but it'll be a couple million more years before that started to happen. We'll check in to see how those dinos are growing in size as we travel through time. But for now, let's see what's happening to Earth. During the Triassic period, the supercontinent Pangaea starts to fragment, slowly altering global climates and ecosystems. The climate was generally hot and dry, and there were no polar ice caps, creating a stark contrast to what you're typically used to in modern-day Earth. The vegetation was also very different, and was crucial for the survival and evolution of dinosaurs. The plants have different characteristics as well. Some are tough, some nutritious, and others potentially poisonous. Each one of them will influence the dietary and adaptive strategies of different dinosaur species. Speaking of which, what are some other dinosaurs doing during this time? Weighing in at about 23 kilograms and one meter tall, we have the Coelophysis. It was a little bit bigger than the Eoraptor, but that didn't stop it from being a fast and agile predator that likely preyed on smaller animals. Now, the Herrerasaurus was slightly taller at about 1.1 meters, but was a lot heavier at about 350 kilograms. Then we have the Platyosaurus. Now, this guy is way bigger than me. It stood tall at about 3 meters and weighed up to 4,000 kilograms. This was one of the earliest examples of how big dinosaurs could grow. But wait, they get even bigger than this. Despite their impressive forms, dinosaurs weren't the dominant creatures during the Triassic. They had to share their environments with many other organisms, all vying for survival in the diverse ecosystems. This was the case until the Triassic period would experience a great extinction event. This was likely caused by massive volcanic activity, climate change, and potentially even some small asteroid impacts this will have a significant effect on life on Earth and lead to the extinction of numerous species. But it wasn't all bad, especially for our dinosaurs. This moment set the stage to bring new opportunities to these species, leading to them dominating the Earth. Jurassic period. Now, instead of dinosaurs simply surviving, this is where they thrive. Over the millions of years, different species have been evolving, and dinosaurs are now the rulers of the Earth. They spread across continents, dominating the lush forests and arid deserts. Occupying these areas were some massive dinosaurs, ones that you're probably a lot more familiar with. We have the Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and Allosaurus. These were some of the largest creatures ever to walk the Earth. But you'd quickly notice that it wasn't just these massive beasts that were roaming around. This era also saw the evolution of theropods. These were smaller dinosaurs that had more of a bird-like form. One of the most famous was the Archaeopteryx. It was kind of like a mix between a dinosaur and a bird, with feathers and wings, but also with bony teeth and a tail. 
The Archaeopteryx was a crucial link between birds and dinosaurs. If you wait about 100 million more years, they'll evolve into the birds we know today. Oh, wait, is that a spoiler? After 56 million years, the Jurassic period comes to an end. This was after yet another extinction event happened. Luckily, this one is more minor. However, due to climate change, volcanic activity, and sea levels changing, some species are going extinct. This once again changes the landscape as the dinosaurs enter their final era. Cretaceous period. Okay, we've now entered the Cretaceous period, and as we've been traveling through these millions of years, you may have noticed something's missing. Right, one of the dinosaurs' biggest stars hasn't appeared yet. Say hello to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The T-Rex was a massive beast. It was 3.7 meters tall and 12 meters long. Not only that, but it was a whopping nine tons. Equipped with a powerful jaw and incredibly sharp teeth, the T-Rex dominated the Cretaceous Kingdom. It was one of the most dominant predators history has ever seen. This colossal beast wasn't just scavenging leftovers, it was an active hunter, stalking its prey with keen eyesight and a heightened sense of smell. Among its favorite meals were the sizable herbivores like the Edmontosaurus. But the T-Rex didn't stop there. It would take on formidable opponents like the Triceratops and even other smaller theropods if the opportunity arose. With its powerful jaws filled with 12-inch teeth and its strong hind limbs that allowed it to run at speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour, the T-Rex was a master of the hunt. But this period wasn't just filled with massive beasts like the T-Rex. Look around and you'll also notice even more feathered dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. One of them being the Velociraptor. Now, you typically see them portrayed like this with no feathers, but evidence suggests that these creatures were quite feathered. Now, the feathers weren't necessarily used for flying, more for warmth and stability. And this one is the Microraptor. Now, unlike the Velociraptor, its feathers likely were used for flight, giving us crucial insight into the evolution of birds. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, Pangaea was breaking up and forming into the continents we know today. But because of this, some dinosaurs were forced to migrate and separate into different areas of the world. These dinosaurs had to adapt to their new environments, potentially changing the course of their evolution. But none of this matters when we consider what happens next. The Cataclysmic Event Okay, as you've been hanging out with the dinosaurs for millions of years, an asteroid has been making its way toward Earth. Then suddenly, it hits, creating a massive crater 150 kilometers wide and 20 kilometers deep. Naturally, something this huge makes a devastating impact on the world, one that'll change it forever. The asteroid's collision is massive, but its impact is felt long after the initial crash. Due to the massive collision, the environment drastically changes. Significant drops in temperature start to occur, and debris from the crash begins to block out the sun. This impacts not only the dinosaurs' health, but also their food supply. This devastating event wipes out 75% of the Earth's species, many of which are the dinosaurs we've been observing this whole time. But don't worry, not all of the dinosaurs went extinct. The aviation-based dinosaurs we checked out earlier managed to survive the asteroid strike, eventually evolving into birds. Aftermath. Now that most of the dinosaurs are extinct, it's cleared the way for mammals to diversify and expand their impact on the world. With less competition, early mammals can now thrive and take over, which slowly, over time, allowed humans to evolve, building the world we know today. Dinosaurs went on to evolve for another 165 million years, but there's still so much we need to learn about them. Like, did you know that not all dinosaurs were cold-blooded? Some of them may have been warm-blooded, or even both. But 
That's a story. Or another. What if?